Greetings from Rob Chapman. <laughs> I'm such a <laughs> at this style of guitar playing. But <laughs> I'm the not. captain. Uh, and there we are. That was my attempt at some sort of... Um, Phrygian slash Phrygian dominant. I don't know. Basically, what I find is that it, when I don't know what I'm really doing and the blues scale just gets boring, I just randomly do this as fast as possible. And some of it works. But you <laughs> <laughs> some of it does Lee, Lee has been on an accelerated guitar <laughs> learning thing recently, uh, assimilated the chord scale, arpeggiation yeah. therein, and then now he's tackling uh, Phrygian dominant and so. loving it. Apparently so. Anyway, look. Welcome to Anderton's TV, uh, with myself the captain. And myself the chaplain. And uh, as is customary, round about January time, every year in the music industry, there is a big old bash in California called the NAMM Show. Uh, lots of famous musical instrument brands turn up and go, Hi, oh, here's everything we're going to sell you in 2018. Yeah. And uh, this Jackson and Charvel are no different. Um, they have a lot of new guitars coming in 2018 and, Rob and some and I, of them old that are new again yeah and we have a selection of them here by no means uh all of them there's there's like probably 50 different guitars coming i'm going to put a link in the description below that you'll be able to click on with a mouse or a finger <laughs> and it'll take you to a story uh, that tells you about all the new guitars coming <laughs> Let's start with... Um, Mine? Yes, Okay, I do. got this beautiful purple flamey dinky. And um, I've got to say, it's it's got a beautiful neckage on it, Captain. Can I, can I just chuck this bombshell in there? This is the first time that Charvel have ever done a dinky body. Right. So the dinky body is a Jackson thing. It's a smaller than usual body shape. So if Just you, like mine. Yeah, if you look at, uh, like, say something like a dinky compared to a soloist, you'll notice the dinky is is smaller, uh, in proportionately the same, but smaller. And Charvel have done... <clears throat> so it's, again, it's a Charvel body, yeah. but, like, with a kind of a Dinkified. dinky vibe. Dinkified. So, so, so it says here, Jean-Marc. So I'm oh, guessing, I don't know what that is. guessing Jean-Marc owns this guitar and we shouldn't be using uh, it. Jean-Marc, perhaps he's one of the, the, the Charvel sales reps, because I know we've got... These are all essentially uh, sort of, you know, what do you call it when they send out advanced That's guitars? That's probably Jean Marc's sweat then, just that, I think that, it little, that little bit of that blim of, of uh, liquid. And then what we've got loaded into this dirty purple beast, other than obviously a Floyd Rosenberg, <laughs> is a full shred, <sighs> aptly placed together with a jazz. Of course. So it goes from... You would... Um, <laughs> you, you would regularly go from some sort of John McLaughlin to Kirk Hammett kind of... Do you think, do you think that naming the pickup the jazz massively uh, puts people off of buying it? Uh, no, I think it's a bit of a misnomer though, because it's mean... it's been in the Samuel Duncan catalogue for like thirty years or something. Hasn't it doesn't it? mean that you play jazz on it. No, it's just their it's just their low, creamy sounding yes. humbucker, isn't it? Uh, so yeah, I mean it does. It would appear that I'm out of tune. <laughs> While the Capitan is tuning his beautiful little Jackson, I'm going to give you some clean tones from this here dinky, starting with the neck pickup. On the full shred. It's 
So you can really hear the difference yeah. in volume. <laughs> Step it on the genage. Or... Great, man. I've been a big, big fan of all the sort of like the Pro Mod series from Charvel for the last probably four or five years. I think they've been out now. Uh, San Dimas and the SoCal. Um, it's kind of cool to see the dinky in the range. I think there's a lot of people like that very slightly smaller body shape. Sounds great. The scene we're not going to pick up sounds great. And they are a kind of a really good mid-price option for anybody that wants a bit of a, an all-rounder. You know, it'll do... Yeah. I mean, it's like... It's not got coil taps on it, has it? Mm, no. no. <laughs> I hate it when, he, when you're short and then you pull the knob off. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a cool guitar. If the Floyd Rose isn't your thing and Rob just leans behind him, you can basically have the same thing uh, with a hardtail. Shall I play uh, this one? Yeah, for sure. Okay, hold on. I'm just... They're compound radius fretboards. There's quite a lot of different finishes uh, in the range, which hopefully Rory will put on the screen now. Um, Thank you, Rory. You can have. Uh, she's not. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what fretboards they're using. A lot of the. A lot of what was in the 2017 catalogue and before Rosewood has been changed to alternative dark coloured woods. That's quite cool. Uh, ebony. Yeah, that is cool. The, Does the other one do that? Yeah, they're all the, they're all like that. They right? all do that. That's a, that's yeah, a cool pro player's feature. Pro player feature. Solvents. <laughs> The, yeah. the whammy bar there. <laughs> yeah, I did it Ve psychically. Very much kind of like a Fender vibe in terms of the, the carve on the back of the neck and a bit flatter on the front. So it's a 12 inch radius down here going to a 16 inch radius as you get further up the fret, fret board. I just want to know what it's like when it drops. <laughs> Nice pickup. Sounds great, man. Yeah. Um, so depending on whether you want the hardtail or the Floyd version, this sort of DK Charvel, uh, DK24 for 24 frets, are going to cost you between sort of eight and nine hundred pounds. Um, as I said, lots of different finishes. I quite liked. We haven't locking got Chino. any I forgot today. to mention locking Chino. Oh, are they? Only on the hardtail version. Yeah. Um, 
I quite like, and again, you'll see these on screen now, there are some really kind of 80s looking guitars, either in white or in natural wood finishes with gold hardware that I sort of think they've got a real touch of that early 80s bling about them, which I think are cool. So anyway, look, it's that's interesting. the Sorry. Charvel DK24. This guitar headstock is the registered trademark of Fender Musical Instruments Corporation and is being used with express permission of FMIC. Fender Musical Instrument Incorporated. Why would they have to put that on the back since Fender own Jackson Charvel? Well, I suppose it's just if they were to ever sell the Charvel brand again, maybe they'd want to make sure that they were being completely... I don't know. I mean, that's the... That's... We've probably done this like 50 times in videos before, but the whole Charvel vibe kind of originated with people taking their guitars to Wayne Charvel's kind of mod shop. That's uh, Wayne, make it better. Uh, him and Grover Jackson, I think, used to work together back in those days. And so, you, you know, the, the Charvel vibe with the, the, the Fender headstock is really kind of a, a nod towards the fact that so many of those early guitars were just modded up Fenders. And that's really all. It, it, it's quite nice, really. It's, it's, I think for a long time, Charvel as a brand didn't really know what it was because it was like, you know, we're not really pointy death machine-y enough to appeal to those guys and we're not really kind of classic enough to, feel to, the to appeal to the Fender guys. But in the last five or six years, that kind of somewhere in the middle has really come back into fashion and on vogue. And obviously Charvel's the perfect, perfect brand to, to be that because that's what it always was. It's surprising how many guitar companies spring from modification custom shops like yeah. the ESP, I think Schecter was originally. Yeah. And Charvel. They're all, I mean, if you go back to companies who started as a parts supplier, ESP, uh, Duesenberg, oh, yeah. Schechter, okay. um, and you're completely right, ja Jackson and Charvel were mod shops. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mesa Boogie was a yeah. mod shop originally, like, as in the, that's how Randall Smith got into it. So there's, mm. I guess. And uh, Fender was a radio shop guy for years, but then he launched a guitar company, Marshall. Was a, was a retailer, yeah. it was a drummer who had a retail store. Right. <laughs> Work that one out. Um, yes, absolutely. I don't, uh, do you know what the story behind Orange? You probably do. Cliff Cooper had a music store on Denmark Street and he couldn't sell Marshall amplifiers because the dealer next door or over the road had Marshall and Marshall had a very strict policy about, you know, not having more than two dealers in the same Marshall, vicinity. they said no. Better regret so, uh, that now, so don't So Cliff they? said, ah, I'll just make my own amps then and I'll make them orange. Best decision he ever made, I suspect. So look, uh, can I talk about this guitar? Absolutely. So this is a Jackson dinky. You'll all be much more familiar, I guess, with Jackson making dinkies than you, because uh, they've done that for years and years and years. Some of the nice new features, I like this three bolt um, neck join, because it gives a, a slightly nicer sort of ergonomic cutaway here for I, when you're I, playing up here, like I never do. I immediately want that guitar. Yeah, it's an ash body, which looks great. Um, I mean, again, nowadays this open grain Ash finish is super, super popular where they don't use any filler and it kind of gives it that slightly more rustic look. Uh, this has got a JB, again, all Seymour Duncan USA pickups, JB in the bridge and a 59 in the neck. We'll give you some tones of that in a minute. I kind of wish it was like Nazgul and Sentience and I wish they were zebras and I think that would massively set it up. Who's, who's phone keeps yeah, beeping? I'm really yeah. sorry. It's very unprofessional. I totally forgot. Um, right. Okay, back in the room. So, uh, where did I did the three thing. Now, the, the big thing on, the big difference, I think, between Jackson and Charvel is whereas the neck on the Charvel is very much a sort of a nod towards a Fender vibe, the Jackson goes m much thinner, um, much more sort of super strat kind of stuff. We've got an ebony fretboard on this. I don't know, I mean, it's, can we zoom in on this, uh, please, Joss? The, look at the thickness of that look ebony fretboard. Thickness. It's kind of like, it's nearly like 50% of the thickness of the neck. It's just the fretboard. I don't know why it's that thick, but there we it is what it is. Um, Floyd Rose on it, um, 
have we got five way? Yeah, five way. So here we go. Let's listen to the clean tones of it. Uh, this was the 59, wasn't it? The, the three in between settings here are going to be a couple of coil tapped ones and the two humbuckers together, so you'll hear some differences. To that a little More bit like honk. a little bit like Rob's guitar, you know, big level, big volume between that. If I put some gain in, I love that guitar. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan as well. So this one, uh, again, is part of a whole new range of Jacksons as well. And I, I don't know if it comes in many other colours, but uh, Rory will put them on screen now. Something like this. These are, you know, I say affordable. It's, they're mid-price. You know, this is under £800. That's great. It's a lot of guitar, isn't it? I'm going to have a little chop on that one later on. All these so far as well are coming out of Fender's Mexican... Factory. So oh. if you don't know, uh, Fender have owned the Jacksell and the Charvel brands for, oh, ages. It must be 20 years or something like that now. But what you're starting to see, the, the Mexican Fender factory, which I genuinely, genuinely think makes probably some of the best mid-priced guitars on the planet. Uh, they're using that factory more and more now to do sort of the mid-priced I Jackson think it's a shame, Charvels. though, that a lot of, a lot of our viewers now... Well, we're going, oh yeah, Jackson, oh, it's pointy, it looks really cool, it's got a similar look. And then when they hear it's made in Mexico, they're going to go, oh, right, okay, yeah. Really? What, as Probably. opposed to just the Far East? Well, I don't or... know. I, th I, think, I think that there's still this perceived mm. uh, quality threshold with different countries. Mm. Like, you think Indonesia makes guitars to a certain level, yeah. or China, yep. or, you know, but we know high-end can be made yeah. anywhere. Well, I'm, I'm old enough... <clears throat> to remember when Fender first opened the Mexican factory. I was in my early 20s uh, selling guitars and absolutely the first probably two or three years of that facility being open, they were ironing out all kinds of production issues and 100% at that time, as they were beginning to transition away from the Japanese stuff over to the Mexican stuff, 100% you needed to buy the Japanese stuff at that time because it was way better. Yeah. Well, not way better, but it was, it was better. Now, it took them about two or three years to iron all those things out. And then really the Japanese and the Mexican Fender stuff were pretty much on par since then. Now we're going back 20 years, over 20 years now. And still, I think the stigma of that early sort of stuff where the Mexican stuff wasn't as good as the Japanese stuff yeah. sticks. And so you still hear people on forums going, oh, no, no, you definitely want the Japanese stuff over the Mexican stuff. And I just, I don't well, get that Well, there's that, that holy hierarchy of, you know, America, Japan, you know, mm. then you get Korea, then you get yeah. Mexico, and then you get Definitely, China. definitely. When you, I think if you throw thousands of pounds at a Japanese guitar, so you go into the ESP Custom Shop or oh, uh, what are the other famous Japanese brands that are Anything still made that out there? Um, hmm? Anything that Big Boss sells. Anything that Big Boss sells. I'm just, I'm just trying to think now. What am I thinking of some of the, you know, Blade and Caparison and uh, some of the Ibanez Japanese stuff? It's monster, but when Fender do, you know, Fender still use Japan to make a lot of sort of seven or eight hundred pound guitars, and to be honest with you, they are exactly the same quality difference as a seven or eight hundred pound Mexican guitar. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying, and I agree with you. China is another one where I would say that's still really difficult. What was, is it? Eastwood is is Eastwood yeah. or Eastman? Eastman? Eastman, sorry. They make very high end guitars in China. Make some very high end, really nicely made guitars. What they sell for over a thousand pounds, right? Oh, way, way, way over a thousand pounds. And it's all like, you know, you can see people going, oh, I really, really like this, I really like this. And then they go, oh, no, 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 Yeah, and yeah. just go, but, but they, that, and in their case, they own their own facility. So it's right. dedicated to them. Mm. But that'll, to that'll change. I mean, it's certainly, I think. Ibanez are kind of trying to blow the lid off the whole Indonesian thing. So Ibanez are making some way higher end guitars out of Indonesia yeah, now. Like the pro stuff. Um, anyway, 
Anywho, right, so that's that guitar and it's very cool, but it's not the one that we're most excited about. Um, we are most excited about the re-release yes. of the SL... When we say we, we mean Pete Honore. <laughs> <laughs> the SL4X. Um, I, I, the love affair with the 80s, which has been going on for the last four or five years <laughs> in all guitars, you know, the... the <laughs> The neon coloured Ibanez is the sort of the, the Charvel resurgence, you know, anything kind of 80s uh, is coming back in. And there is none more 80s, I don't think, than the Jackson SL4X. Uh, there are some fantastic pictures of Jeff Beck during that time playing these. Our very own Joss Allen owns an original pink one, I think. Um, they've changed a little bit. You know, they, they, they didn't always come with these three pickups, but they always had this kind of quirky pick guard design. It's a it's a neck through design. It's very, very cool. These are Indonesian, so these are kind of crazy good value. These are like 550 pounds or something. Mm. Uh, I just, I wish the, it didn't have the pick guard on. Really? Yeah, I just, I can't, I can't get over that pick guard. But this is what makes it, fair. and so John yeah. Mayer recently, I think, was seen with like a super custom shop version of the blue one. Um, there's a pink one. In fact, let's have all hey three John. on the screen now because they look all, hey John. Hey John. I love you John. Um, Duncan Design, so not full USA, full fat pickups. They're the sort of the Far Eastern Duncan pickups, but they're all um, hot rail humbuckers. Take them through some tones, okay, Robert. Okay, let's do some toe and edge. <laughs> Off the edge. It's got it's very much you know Jackson vibe, wide wide neck, uh, flat fingerboard, uh, thin you know thin this way. Um, I think it's cool. Your twenty four fret. It's very cool. I'm 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 into this. Uh, I expect we'll jam out using at least one of these. You're into this um, because it crosses the boundary into the traditional and the vintage with this thing, but then it's all super high end with the with the color. I mean I can't think of a guitar that suits you less. I, I'm into this now because I don't think this I don't think this would pigeonhole me into being a certain type of guitar player. Is that because I think John Mayer has opened the door for yeah, you? Yeah, I think a guitar player would come out with this and, and the audience would go, oh, that's interesting. Let's see what's going to happen here. That's you know, is it, is he gonna... is the one that Pete's wet about. Yeah, that, that's very cool too. No, I'd, I'd probably have the blue one over the orange one. Um, I love that. But... Yeah, but I, I do like these a lot, and I think they're great. I think it's great value. £550 for one of these is great value. Um, so I'll probably jam out on that one. But well, what, the, what does your sound like, Lee? Because it's orange. It'll have different sounds. Well, it'll be more orange, won't it? You know, the only 
thing that I'm going to be a little, not critical is probably unfair, but hot rail pickups have never been my favourite because they end up being neither spanky enough to be a single coil pickup or quite ballsy enough to be a full In, humbucker. I, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say it should have been uh, blade, single, single. Or HSS. I'm not, I'm just not, I mean, one of the things I'm assuming you can do with this, uh, these are like Telecaster bridge pickups, don't they? They do, yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming that you could probably buy just a Telecaster bridge pickup and insert them in here. And then this one's just a normal scratch plate mounted single coil. So if you really wanted to, I guess you could buy one of these and chuck some different pickups in there. Um, but it's, it's kind of cool. And, and with gain, uh... <laughs> Can you hear that though? It's slightly less ballsy than a full humbucker it's would be. It's got some run. Just, it is what it is. It's great. Anyway. So the last one in the, well, not, not the last one in the range, but the last one we've got here today, the last of the new releases we've got today, is uh, this brand new single cut shape that's never been done before and hasn't been ripped off 10 million times. Uh, Jackson call this innovative new shape their Monarch series. Right, um, like a butterfly. Because I do believe it's uh, Grover Jackson's favorite airline. It definitely isn't Grover Jackson's favourite airline. Um, I think they went bust last year anyway. That's the airline, not Jackson. Um, so this is called a Monarch Pro SC. Um, big extended kind of cutaway at the back here. Uh, it's a um, neck through, no, what do you call it? Set through, set through. sorry, set through design. I think I mentioned on the so on these, these were neck through. I, I, I uh, meant set through. Set through. Yeah. Um, also seen with Duncan USA pickups on it, but I don't know which ones, so let's just take a short intermission. Right, so these are, these again are mahogany body, quilt maple top, um, JB and a, what did I say, 59? Yep. That's very cool. Uh, ebony fretboard as well. You'll notice, in fact, that was the other thing I meant to say. I thought that Jackson and Charvel had completely ditched Rosewood for 2018 due to the difficulties of um, uh, importing and exporting <sighs> Rosewood. But the, the, the SL4X is, is a Rosewood guitar. They've so just got you, a stock of Rosewood to get through. I don't know whether this, will, whether this spec will change during 2018 or not, but be careful if you're buying, uh, if you want to buy a guitar with a Rosewood fretboard or any element of Rosewood on the, the guitar anymore, um, you'll you may have problems in the future selling it to somebody uh, outside of your country. Uh, we've done lots of CITES videos before. I mean, it is an issue because, for example, I purchased a guitar in America. Yes, you and did. And made a decision actually not to, purely because it had Rosewood fretboard and I had yeah. to do all the CITES documentation, import, export, bull and I just thought, you know what, I'll buy something else. Yeah, so I do, I mean, if you live in, you know, if you live in the UK or, or, or Europe or you live in America or Canada or wherever it is and the dealer in your country has already got the guitar, then you're fine, you don't have to do anything, you can just buy that guitar. But be aware, if you wanted to buy that guitar from a dealer in another country and have them send it to you, or you wanted to sell that guitar to a person in another country, uh, you may have some difficulties if it's got a rosewood fretboard on it. Anyway, enough of that. Let's listen to this. Uh, this doesn't have any coil taps or anything like that. Uh, so here's the neck pickup. Both together. It's got that ESP thing on it where the, the knobs are the other way around. Right. So the, the assumption is the only pickup you'd ever want to control the volume of is the bridge one, so they put that in the easiest position right. to get. And then the neck pickup is on the on the other button. So it's kind of not really intuitive, and then you've just got a single tone control. Um, again, it's got a it's it's like having a Les Paul with a Jackson neck on it, basically. Do you so like that's playing? Your it kind of feel nice? Yeah, I mean it's 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 not a guitar for the traditional Les Paul guy. It's a it's a guitar for the guy that wants a um, a Jackson 
feel, yeah. but in perhaps something with a more of a, a Gibson look and sound. <laughs> I quite like the um, what they've done with the shark tooth or the yeah. inlays, where they're they're just outlined rather than completely filled in. I really like the the colour and the finish. Machine but heads. I'm not a big fan of the of the horn. Do you know what the Monarch series? They released this about two years ago. You can get this basic style of guitar in the Jackson range, all the way down to the JS series at a couple of hundred pounds, right up to you know spending thousands in the custom shop if you want to. And I'm a little bit with you. It's almost a bit like look. The world didn't need another Les Paul copy. I know, I like those. It's just the shape of the horn. Oh, here, the, yeah. the Florentine kind of cutaway, yeah. I it's, think it just looks a bit... I mean, the you're Rubia, not wrong. It's Rubia sort of, said it best. It's, it's sort a bit of like... Neat. And is it... Who's a horn? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, oh, I've run out of wood, I'll just make it small. Yeah. Um, it doesn't seem how, to fit Having the rest. said that, though, you know, what do you do? It's like, what do you do when you want to make a single cut design? Well, you design a better horn. But and then it just looks like someone else's guitar. You've got to try and go for your own kind of vibe, haven't you? Um, what do you think, viewers? What do you think, viewers? I, I think Ultimately, I'm with you. It's their choice. You know, if you don't want a Les Paul, and you you know you're probably going to look at something like an ESP um, EC shape, aren't you? Yeah. They call it Eclipse shape. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, it's it sounds good and it plays good. This probably isn't my favourite colour, but there are bucket loads of other colours. I'm sure Rory will put them on the screen now. Uh, so shall we? Um, Jam. Should we jam? I really, really want to jam on one of these because it looks cool. So I'm going back for the blue one. What are you going for? This one. Anyway, before we jam out, can I just say hello to all of our friends at Jackson and Charvel. Good luck for 2018. And for you, the viewers, thanks for watching. And again, I'll put a link in the description below that you'll be able to click on with a mouse. You can find out about every single Jackson and Charvel guitar for the, for the 2018 lineup. Uh, enjoy. everybody, thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.